to be honest you, I'm very excited these days because I finally got the Mega 65. My wife bought it to me as my birthday gift in 2021 and it finally arrived uh, this week. Yeah, a little bit later, but anyway, in, in 2023. It's such a great piece of hardware, but it's not just hardware. It's a little bit what it is. It is hardware. It is PGA based, so it can be many different computers. It is a Commodore C65 or a reinvention of that. So it's a new kind of Commodore 65, but it has some modern capabilities like HDMI output, but not necessarily that many modern things. There's no USB there, for example, thanks God. You know, so for example, joysticks are the old style of joysticks and you don't have to deal with the lag that you get through USB, it's instant. It's really amazing to play games on this because you just get that snappy feel. Of course, most old uh, joysticks nowadays are have some kind of fault, right? I have several of them, but there's either a little bit schlucky or button doesn't work, all that things, which we also had back in the time. So I'll put in an order for the archive error joystick, just to have something that's new and fun fully functional to play with. We obviously, back in the time, we used to play with these joysticks, you go to the maze, which would have a different joystick, which would be his favorite. And he had a secondary one that was also more broken. So you always used to blame the joysticks, which partially was true as well. Some like the joystick that had more, you had to do harder and others were more instant, you know, micro switches versus other mechanisms and so on. Uh, and you still have that. But yes, obviously you don't have that much choice of new hardware to buy when it comes to joysticks. So you have to try to find something that actually somehow fits with your own preference to what's actually available. But yeah, that's, I mean, playing with that is just fantastic because actually when you use emulators, you always get that USB lag and also the lag of the Windows operating systems and so on. And it's difficult actually to play these games. Uh, modern hardcore gamers are so into getting their milliseconds down and the frequency up, but actually it's, it's just as important of all style games, even though they are not FPSs, but they are just were made for ultra fast reactions to actually be the good gamer. Actually, it's kind of good to be back in there because then games are much are really to that immediate skill and not the modern game when you do all this other stuff and you have a thousand things to think about. It's just down to but it also has other cores since it's FPGA already. It has the C64 core. It also has a Game Boy and Spectrum core that I haven't tried yet because the HDMI doesn't work on my screen yet. When they are working on other cores, probably it can be all kinds of old retro systems, just like some other FPGA platforms are. But with this kind of hardware, with a fantastic keyboard, I know a lot of people give praise to the keyboard. We can't really give it enough praise. It's really the best keyboard I ever had. It's just amazing and with all this function, now it is great. The C65 core or the Mega 65 core is upgraded to modern standards, so it's, it's a really good one. Although after a while, the development of the core and the ROM needs to slow down to not break backward compatibility. But I do suspect that they will keep developing them for many, many years but it will slow down to for releases and actually try to do minimize um, changes that actually impacts compatibility. This also have this uh, skin around it, like, you know, the files for your freezer and your monitor and these things. And these can obviously still be used and to give you more and more functionality. And it can also make you do things that you never did on computers through these functions, right? Um, you don't need cartridge, you can do your soft ROM in, in there and do really crazy shit. That's really good. Uh, the C64 core is also already, uh, even though it's still in development, really, really good. And if you listen to the SIDS, the FPGA SIDS, they are amazing, to be honest. It's like, uh, I have I have like a hard SID, a USB-based uh, sound card, which has real SIDS in it. And that's really amazing as well, because that's the real stuff, and this is not far from the real stuff. It isn't quite quite, but it's really loud. You, you feel the sound real, and it is a difference when you do that from em emulated, to be honest, even though emulated can also be okay. There's something with that SID chip that is, that the real listeners really just love. Something impure even, right? Something dirty, in a way. 
there is a mega core on the way. Some speculation that it won't be able to do a mega, but uh, we will see. Uh, at least there's in the plan, so probably it will be one. And also, I think you will have Mac and uh, NES and all these others in there eventually, so it can be anything. It can also be really good actually for um, industrial machines, you know, where you have industrial systems uh, you sometimes have old computers that have been staying there a long time or you have some kind of windows system in the way which is really vulnerable and you should get rid of computer can be your industrial system in many places so but that. it's it's made with love i have to say this is not a volume product and it's not put to market to earn money. This is done by cube pure dedication and it, you can feel that through everything that you see here that this is really a product that they care about. It's it's good stuff. It comes with quite an extensive software suite about anything that actually exists on Mega 65 today and they have actually used the years to have competitions and stuff to actually get people to create demos and uh, games and stuff for the platform which then comes with the system and you also have access online to get when more stuff is coming on as long as it's not commercial grade you also have some of the c64 games from rdcd fantastic to have that suite as well those are compatible with the c64 mode or the omega 65 so you don't need to change code to play them and you have geo 65 for me, that's not so important. However, Geo65 kind of shows another world and how this computer actually can have graphical user interfaces. And I think we will see not just Geo65, but other graphical uh, interfaces for it as well. Maybe Linux and Unix versions as well, or something like BIOS or QNX as well for industrial systems or for, you know, very lightweight uh, graphical systems. So, and also the interacting with the network support can even give you, you know, uh, support to games even in C64 through the network. You can feed it, for example, with something like ChatGPT. Uh, so, you know, it, it really opens up for a kind of new game of style and new things. Development, of course, uh, uh, the teams that develop for it are very dedicated, but we need more developers for sure. I am also getting... Uh, inspired for, for this and wants to uh, develop games again, but uh, I, I probably don't have time or at least not to do it alone, but yes, it, it gives you that spirit, you want to do stuff for it, and, uh, and that's also why you need to buy one. Some people think the price of 666 euros, uh, number of the beast uh, price, is too high, but then you have to look at what it is. If I'm going to buy C64 mint condition today, it's going to be quite expensive. If I'm going to be buy a C65, it's way too expensive. And it's a prototype that probably can't do much anyway. Uh, this one can. We can do everything. You can buy cheap C64s. So I have quite a few C64s in the Migas, not thousands, but I have a small collection of them, of the old ones. But the problem with them, one is that they are old. Right. Two, that they are not mint condition, so they are all a little wobbly wobbly. Three, that you need to do all this stuff for them to get the marking and uh, all modern systems and stuff. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, I like them, but they are uh, they are for their own age. They are not systems that you will use every day because obviously they are all wear and tear and all that. So, but Mega 65 is for today and it can be all that. And because it takes into account the retro feel with the old style of joystick, the mouse can be either Amiga or C64. Of course, those when you have the mouse with the big wheel and stuff, they are not the best. I mean, anyone remembers back with the Amiga that you were like with the mouse, and then we prefer optical mice. So there, I actually believe that having the mouse adapter, when you can use a modern optical USB mouse connected to it is better. I have bought one and it's put in order, but I don't really know how it will be in real life. So maybe I will talk more about it later. But anyway, I believe that you need an optical mouse to get the full feel. The problem with mouse, of course, and um, the people know from, uh, at least from back in the days, is to get the best relationship between the sensitivity and what is good for you on the screen. 
But it also you can connect old style cartridges on it. You can connect the um, Commodore 664 uh, disk drives and you have the expansion port and you have ports for the expansion on the back. In fact, you can have further hardware development to support other things. And for software, I mean, even though you get a, a good bunch of software with the system, I think we are very far away from understanding the possibilities of this computer, even with some of the demonstration. I mean, Looking forward to that. I saw an article that says that it will supersede uh, an Amiga Aga computer. So I'm really looking forward to something if, if there is, uh, and I hope so, some development for demos and games that can take the full advantage of that and maybe give new life to some of the development that is still being done on the C64 and Amiga platform, but also some of the old games. Like maybe we can get James Bond 4. Or like Chris Spec made the music for Turrican 4. Maybe someone will actually make the game on Amiga 65, wouldn't that, that be awesome? I would also say it's future proof because of what it is and because of what it represents. This is a machine that can live another 40 years, just like the C64 has lived that long. While it, the C64 probably was in its original condition, will not many of them will not last that much longer. Mega 65 and similar iterations will help that to last and hopefully bring in new eager uh, uh, fans to develop and create cool stuff on it. So for me, this is the ultimate retro system and this is the one that rules them all. And you need to buy one, obviously. Waiting times are long, so you, you should not wait by putting in the order. And you also realize because it's such a small dedicated production line, the prices of these will go up, not downwards, because who knows how many will ever be made, uh, at least in this configuration, and not that many. They will not be the millions, uh, unless obviously it gets itself to success that someone actually puts it into a proper production line. But um, still, the first ones, these will be, of course, the one that will, will be the most valuable. Yes. Cheers.